Hey, this is Mike with Riding in the Ozarks, and this week Harley-Davidson announced their virtual launch event on July 13th to reveal another all-new motorcycle built on the Revolution Max platform, but in the sports segment. I am sure this is the same motorcycle I've been referring to as the Custom 1250 for the last six months. Truth be told, I heard they were going to make this announcement a few days ago, but it hardly seemed to be enough information to make it worth doing a full video on. Well, today they posted the press release, they released a photo that I feel shows something interesting, and they dropped a 15 second YouTube teaser video that confirms something I've been saying for at least six months now. Let's watch this YouTube teaser. When I first started talking about the Custom 1250, I said it was going to replace the Sportster, at least in markets where the Sportster is no longer available for purchase in the EU. The Sportster is not available for purchase in the EU in 2021 because Harley-Davidson did not update it to meet Euro 5 standards. Why not, you might ask? Well, declining sales was cited as one reason in an article I read. Now think about it. If you're Harley-Davidson and Sportster sales are down, and you know you're going to release a new 1250cc performance cruiser with about 150 horsepower in the next year. Any way you would bother to update the Sportster which only puts out 61 horsepower for these same markets? By the way, if you want to know more about this 150 horsepower, the Revolution Max, I did a whole video on it that tells you 6 important things you should know about this motor. Since I first started looking into this future model, Harley-Davidson has eliminated the street lineup of entry level bikes entirely and downsize the portfolio for Sportster models they offer in 2021 to just three, while just two years ago there were seven models of Sportsters available. Now this teaser video is titled, From Evolution to Revolution. The Sportster is the only current model running an Evolution motor, so I would say this video is another hint that the Sportster line is being replaced with the all new Performance Cruiser. I still believe the Sportster is on borrowed time and Harley-Davidson will be killing the Sportster after this year. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess we'll find out when they release new models next year. I do think it would make sense for Harley-Davidson to produce a smaller 500cc or 750cc displacement motorcycle based off this new motor in the future. As we've seen with the release of the Pan America, this motor is a platform that can produce excellent performance numbers. Listen to what Harley-Davidson says about this platform during the Pan America launch event. This is a new genre for Harley-Davidson. We plan to build upon this platform going forward. A product that's coming out very soon, the 1250 Custom Cruiser. It's got a fistful of torque and power, just like the Pan America. Now just consider, if sales were that bad for the street models, why not cut your losses now and focus on building a better solution on this platform? I think that's the decision that makes sense for Harley-Davidson, and it was a good call by the new CEO. I know some people like to refer to Jochen as the German shoe salesman. Hog stock prices are currently sitting at about $46 a share. That's the highest it's been in the last three years. When Zeitz took over a year ago, stock was at a five-year low of less than $19 a share. So he's doing something right, at least from an investor standpoint. All right, let's talk about what's in this press release. Harley-Davidson announces a new mid-season motorcycle reveal. From evolution to revolution. This virtual launch experience will be held July 13th, 2021 at 10 a.m. Central Daylight Time. This new model follows an exciting arrival of the Harley-Davidson Pan America 1250 with its all-new Revolution Max powertrain in dealerships around the world. Following the successful launch of our first adventure touring motorcycle, the Pan America, we are excited to reveal another all-new motorcycle built on the Revolution Max platform in the sport segment, showcasing unmatched Harley-Davidson technology, performance, and style, said Jochen Zeitz, Chairman, President, and CEO of Harley-Davidson. The reveal event will preview details of the new motorcycle model and will include presentations by Harley-Davidson leadership, product experts, and the passionate riders who are developing and bringing to market another powerful new motorcycle coming to Harley-Davidson in 2021. Okay, the part I find most interesting here is the line, built on the Revolution Max platform in the sport 
segment. As I've mentioned before, Harley Davidson no longer has classes on their website called Sportsters. In fact, in the last few years, they started lumping the Sportsters and the Streets together under the classification of Street. And then, after canceling the Streets, there are only three Sportsters left in the website under that class. I think the sports segment means that Harley Davidson intends to create a new segment based on this genre and platform. I expect we'll see additional models and different displacements in this segment as Harley-Davidson continues to build on this platform going forward. For all you customers that want the traditional V-twin air-cooled motor, this is a good sign. A new sports segment could be a place for performance cruisers and baggers based on this platform while traditional V-twin and air-cooled versions continue in their current segments. I've talked about this bike in four different videos over the last six months. If you're interested in my thoughts on those videos or where I think it's going to fit in the lineup, there'll be a link in the description down below. I'm not going to go back over all the details from those teased images, but I can tell you that this bike draws from the Pan America in many ways. I rode the Pan America. 50 mile an hour. Woo! You can see in the images the hand controls are based on that bike and not the traditional Harley-Davidson hand controls. This display is black face, so it's probably a digital display, and I'll bet we'll see something similar to what Harley-Davidson did on the Pan American in the sense of functionality. It will integrate with your smartphone for things like GPS and connectivity. In this shot, you can see what I feel looks like a knob on the left side, so this could be a suspension adjustment for preload. I am hoping this bike has an IMU and rider modes and several ABS-related technologies like the Pan America. Not because I personally feel the bike needs them, but because in other markets outside the U.S. it's becoming a standard. And I'm afraid Harley-Davidson is going to have to implement them just so people will stop asking why Harley-Davidson doesn't have rider modes. Now some people have said forward controls are a bad idea for a performance cruiser. Uh, if you feel that way, I hope you're complaining about it on the Rocket 3 GT as well. I personally disagree. I prefer forward controls. But for me, it's about comfort, and I don't find mid controls comfortable on a bike with a low seat height. The Rebel 1100 is a perfect example of this. I rode it, and it's a fine machine. My biggest and main complaint was it was cramped. I don't like the ergonomics of the foot positions and how wide it is at the foot pegs. I've already said I expect this bike to have at least 140 horsepower and more torque than the Pan America. I think it'll have a slightly different tune than the Pan America because they want it to have the feel of a cruiser. Do the pictures released today tell us anything new at all? One of the biggest complaints I've heard from the prototype images I've shown before was the lack of dual disc brakes on a performance oriented machine. Which does seem strange considering the Pan America has dual front discs, the V-Rod had dual front discs, so why would Harley not put dual disc on this? It just doesn't feel right. If we look at this image on the Harley Davidson website today, it sure looks to me like that is a brake rotor in the bottom right corner. So now the question is, have they been playing us by teasing a single disc brake in the front all along, or is this not a disc rotor on the right side of the wheel? Or am I simply imagining things based on wishful thinking? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think of the new custom 1250, and is that a second rotor I spy? If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. If you do that YouTube thing, check out the content on my channel. And if you dig it, don't forget to subscribe down below. Ring that bell to be notified the next time I drop a new video. And as always, thank you for support. Stay safe and keep on riding.